welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Chef Darren Nixon of Divine Cooking, of course, representing uh, the town of Okotoks for the taste of Okotoks. Um, we have a really cool little little kind of menu for you uh, that uh, is kind of inspiring and uh, works really well for the summer months and also to kind of get the family involved in things. So that's what we're kind of going to aim at today. So we're we're going to um, we're going to actually do a Mediterranean pulled pork, and we're going to do a little locally inspired Greek salad and some lemon potatoes, uh, lemon Greek potatoes, as well as some tzatziki. So uh, it's a great uh, summer meal. Just goes together so nicely, and um, you don't have to heat up the house by turning on the oven. That's a beautiful thing. And it's, um, it's good for so many reasons. It, it, and it covers all your bases. It, you can feed a, a fairly good sized group of people relatively easily. Um, with a little bit of work done the, the day before, you can actually go out and enjoy the outdoors and just kind of uh, enjoy the day, enjoy the sunshine, and then um, come back and dinner is pretty much made. So, so let's get started. We're gonna actually start uh, simply for the reason that we have to get uh, the things that take longer started first. We're going to do the potatoes. We're gonna get the lemon potatoes started. Now, this is pretty easy. I've, again, I'm not doing a big batch because I'm only serving uh, myself pretty much. And so we will, we will simply do a, sm a smaller version. Um, this recipe will be available through the town of Okotoks on their website. Um, and so you can, kind of, you can kind of have a look and follow along get the recipes kind of so you know what I'm talking about as, as you go through this. Um, so the very first thing that we're gonna talk about, I've said in the recipe that we're gonna use gold flesh potatoes. Now, they don't have to be gold flesh, but that is, that is certainly one of the ones that I would use. Um, however, I couldn't, I couldn't turn up the opportunity to use these. Um, these are a locally grown freshly dug potato and and I mean we're in that season right now that potatoes are just starting to come up and um, and it's a beautiful thing so I thought we should use these I did do a test run with these and they worked out really nice so so I think it works out pretty well so um, the lemon potato recipe is really simple it's um, basically I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in the oven today but typically on the barbecue I would suggest especially when the weather is this warm um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it is warm in here right now. And um, all right, so we're going to get started with this. So we're going to take the potatoes. If they're small, you don't have to cut them. If they're big, you're going to cut them, you know, maybe into sixes. So, so either way is fine. Uh, I'm going to cut these small ones just into half. Um, there's a couple really small ones here that I'm going to put right in there like that. Uh, then I am going to cut the rest of them just in half. Now, these lemon potatoes are very common. You can serve this dish uh, that we're going to do, uh, the pork, it could be served with a lemon rice, it could be served um, with a lemon potato, or you could do just with, with the pitas or what have you. It, it's really straightforward. It's uh, no half to anything. So we're gonna get those in the pan. Um, and then to the pan, we're gonna add a few things. Um, we're gonna actually mix up a little, little mixture here. Um, so obviously lemon is, is going to be our pro profile, flavor profile that we're looking for here. And we're going to take a lemon and I'm, I like to take the zest of the lemon because I find that that obviously, I mean, there's two components to flavor of lemon. There is the acidic po portion and then there is the aromatic portion. The zest is the aromatic portion. So in order to get that nice uh, lemon aromatics into it, we want to use the zest. That's super important for this type of thing. So we're going to take the zest off and you really, you know, you don't want to get too carried away, but you can't really overdo it too much. It's just going to end up giving you that nice kind of lemon flavor. So if you can kind of see there, we've got a fairly good amount of lemon zest. So into the potatoes that goes, then we're going to get the juice portion of that. All right, so to that we will add our juice portion. And yeah, you don't have to use the juicer by any means. I typically don't always use that juicer. Um, I just use my hands. That seems to work better for me. 
So we're gonna, we wanna have probably, depending on the amount that you're doing, but you wanna have a good amount. So we're doing probably a half the recipe, maybe even a quarter. So you're looking at an eighth of a cup uh, to a quarter of a cup of, of lemon juice. That should, should do you well. And I think we're pretty good with just a half a lemon right now. I think that's gonna work out really well. Okay, so you can kind of see what we got going on there. Uh, to that, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Now, this is a Greek recipe, and of course, yeah, it's got olive oil in it. So don't don't leave out the olive oil. Um, I prefer the olive oil over over many of the other oils for sure. And we're going to also add to that. We're gonna smash some garlic because that's another classic flavor as far as um, the Greek kind of like food goes. So we. And then that's why we all love this, this food, this profile of this kind of style of food for sure. Um, so again, a, a quick smash. I'm not gonna do a whole bunch with these. I will give them a couple little chops and it's gonna go right in there. Um, you don't have to have minced garlic and, and yada yada. Just, just go ahead and smash two or three cloves. I am adding a fair bit here, but no one ever died from too much garlic. I don't think anyways. Uh, so we'll give this a quick chop. And in that goes, um, then we can add, we're gonna add our lemon juice and our olive oil to that pan. We can kind of see what we have going on here. Voila. Uh, to that, we are going to add a little bit of chicken stock. And what happens during this cooking process is we're gonna cover it, but not completely cover it. We're going to cover it with something that's called a cartouche. Um, that is a, that's a French term and something you learn in cooking school, but regardless, we're, we're, we're not gonna fully seal it around, but we're gonna lay this on top as it's cooking. What that'll do is, is hold in some of the moisture and allow the potatoes to get tender and cook through. Um, but at the same time, it'll allow some of the steam, or it'll allow it to evaporate. We're, we're not gonna have um, soupy potatoes when we're done. We're gonna have a nice lemony flavored potato and that's, and that's kind of what we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of dried oregano. Um, again, classic flavors of, of Greek food for sure. Then to that, we will add a little bit of kosher salt. Now, I've given amounts in the recipes. However, I'm not big into measuring my salt and pepper. I just kind of do it to taste. So please kind of consider that when you're looking at that, at the recipe. So we'll just have a look at this now. I think we've done pretty good. You can see now this is a very, very simple recipe. You can do this, kind of organize all of your ingredients ahead of time. But you can kind of see what I have going on here. I'm gonna tilt it down. So it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, we're gonna give us a, a stir to all that just to make sure we have all of our ingredients kind of uh, mixed together. And then we're gonna put on our cartouche. So that's just silly, that's just parchment paper that I cut to the approximate size of the top of the pan. Um, you don't have to get too stressed out about that. If you can, you could literally use tin foil. You could use whatever you want. Um, I wouldn't put a lid on there that sits and seals it because then nothing will escape as far as evaporation. You do require a little bit of that. So now we're going to pop it in. So we've preheated the oven to 400 degrees. Um, Again, I would suggest doing this on the barbecue. Um, my wife's not very happy right now that I have turned on the barbecue on this hot day, but um, it works really good for this demo. So behind me, bar or the oven is preheated to 400 degrees and we're gonna pop it in the oven and let it do its thing. You're looking at about 30 to 40 minutes for this to cook, for the potatoes to get tender and they'll actually start to brown a little bit. So it's a beautiful thing. We'll have a look at that in a few minutes here. So when that goes, all right. Okay, so the potatoes, we wanted to start with just to get them out of the way, uh, simply because they're gonna take the longest. Now, let's, let's move on here. We're gonna have a quick look at, I think we'll talk about the, uh, the Greek salad next. So we're gonna do a Greek salad. So this menu basically uh, is composed of our our beautiful Mediterranean pork, which can't wait to talk about that. Our Mediterranean or Greek salad. Um, what I really love about the Greek salad right now is that 
that all most of the ingredients that we're going to use in it are local and um, this is our season when, when we can actually grow these these ingredients so very very cool so uh, and then of course some tzatziki and then the potatoes that we have in the oven and you can certainly serve this with uh, some pitas right so a great great little offering so I'm just going to grab the ingredients for our Greek salad and bring them over and get organized for that. So the first thing that we're going to look at is these are some nice local tomatoes. Uh, these are Broxburn tomatoes. Um, they're sold at Sobeys and Okotoks here, and they are the best hour in tomatoes you've ever had for sure. Um, just and they're, they, they come in um, different colors and they're so they're beautiful to look at, beautiful to eat. They're just amazing. We also have local cucumbers, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, local peppers, which again, we can't get these all the time uh, throughout the year, but right now this is the season. So I'm using green and yellow uh, just because I'm always thinking about the colors of, of what, what, we're, what we're making. A Little bit of red wine vinegar, some feta cheese, a little bit of Dijon mustard, some Kalamata olives, and guess what, more lemon. It's all about the lemon when we're, when we're making Greek food for sure, or Mediterranean food. Okay, so this goes together really easy. I'm sure everybody out there has made a Greek salad. Um, what really inspired me was the local ingredients that were growing so much of what's in the salad that it, I, I thought, man, it sure goes good uh, together. Also, I should mention that I had a, a friend of mine um, by the name of Amanda inspired me to, to actually, she, she was going to build this recipe. And so I actually contacted her and said, would you mind if I did that recipe for the taste of Okotoks? Because it really works well um, as a, for a family. And on top of that, you can certainly get, a lot of this can be done the day ahead of time. So you can, you can get the pork organized in the fridge. You can get um, the tzatziki made. You can do this salad that we're about to do. So you can get the kids involved with this. So that to me is like pretty valuable that you, you, you can kind of um, kick, you know, tick things off your, off your list and get everything organized ahead of time. And I think that's important to get kids involved, uh, get them cooking, get them helping chop vegetables. Um, it's, it's important. And um, I know that at times my kids used, used the knife at a young age and we were wary of it, but in the same light, I think it was, it was actually a good thing to do. So, so get everybody involved. This is kind of a family affair to get this whole thing happening. All right. So straightforward stuff. You guys know the drill on, on making this. Uh, so we're going to take our cucumber again, local cucumber, and we're going to cube it up. Now the recipe suggests just to cube it and that's what I'm going to do but I'm going to show you I had I was trying to think of how to describe that in the, in the actual recipe but what we're going to do is I'm going to cut lengthwise into quarters and that gives you an idea so that's what we're looking for to start with and then from there we're going to cut the cubes out you don't have to peel it you don't have to scoop out the seeds you don't have to do anything just nice kind of bite-sized cucumber pieces is what we're looking for here Okay, so into the bowl that goes. One went on the floor, so the dog is a lucky dog. We have a very lucky dog, FYI. Uh, and then we're gonna use a little bit of uh, each of these peppers. We have a yellow pepper and we have a green pepper. Uh, again, I chose those. Green pepper is a, is a very common, classic uh, Greek salad pepper. However, not everybody in my family loves green pepper, so I tend to switch it up a little bit. I tend to use a little bit of um, one, of the, one of the sweeter peppers as well as a green pepper, but it works either way. So we're going to cut those again using our cucumber kind of size as, as kind of a general rule. Um, we're going to try to do something very similar. So there goes the green pepper. I'll cut the yellow pepper the same. Already we've got some beautiful flavors and colors happening. You can just see that, that we're, we're doing, you know, this salad makes anybody look like a good cook as far as I'm concerned. These tomatoes, uh, Broxburn tomatoes, again, you can't get them everywhere, but Sobeys and Okotoks has them. And I'll tell you, um, we have people that come from all around just to get these tomatoes. They're, they're, uh, they're a sought after item. Sweetest tomatoes you will probably ever taste. 
So these are the cocktail size. So I'm going to actually quarter them as opposed to having them. The recipe suggested having them, but uh, but if you have a cherry tomato, which is slightly smaller than this, then go ahead and have it. That's fine. Um, but the cocktail size, we're going to quarter. All right. So things are, things are really coming together. Um, how can you go wrong here? Right. Uh, what the next thing we're going to add is a little bit of red onion. Um, now you can, you can do a bunch of this or a little bit of this, however you want. Um, in my family, we have a couple people that don't love the red onion. They, it kind of upsets the stomach. So um, I still add it to things because I think it's a super important flavor profile. However, you can do that in a, in a way that isn't quite so uh, invasive. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to actually slice, kind of thin slices of the red onion. That way you get it in there. It's easy to remove still, um, as opposed to the big chunks of red onion. And now again, if you love red onion, have at her. Just give her and put a whole bunch in there. That's all good. But what we're going to do today is nice thin slices and in we go. Okay. Again, I love the purple reddish color against all the other colors that we have in the, in the bowl right now. That works really well. Then we're going to add some Kalamata olives. These are, these are a, a, seat, or a pitted Kalamata olive. Um, that's what I recommend, but you certainly don't have to. If you happen to have in the pantry or in the fridge, if you have olives, uh, Kalamata olives that are that, that have this, the pits in them, have at it. Again, no problem. Warn your guests that there's pits in those so that nobody loses the tooth. So we'll put those in there. Um, then the last, or a couple last things here we're going to add, some feta cheese, obviously. There's numerous different fetas out there. I'm going with the basic kind of feta cheese. Uh, one thing that I do like to do for the salad. Now you, you'll see different variations of the salad, of course, but what I try to do is cube it up, um, cube up the cheese, and it kind of kind of works as a another kind of component of, of the salad. And I'm not going to be shy with it either. I'm going to be pretty generous with the cheese today. So we'll have a look. I don't think the dog's gonna go anywhere because I have peppers here, huh? Our dog is, uh, she's a pepper lover. Uh, she loves any kind of pepper. So right now she is expecting to be fed. So I am actually going to give her a little, a little taste. Uh, so any of the little bits of the, the peppers that don't get eaten, we don't throw them out, the dog gets them. And she is super thankful for that. All right, so we will, we have our, we have a spoon to give it a stir here. I'm just going to grab a cloth to wipe my cutting board. All right. So yeah, this is all coming together really, really nice um, to this beautiful bowl of ingredients. And you can see the color that we have going on. Um, we're going to add a few things to that. Uh, obviously we're going to add kind of a dressing now. Um, all right. So we're, we're kind of uh, part way through building this Greek salad. And uh, so we've got everything in the bowl um, as far as the salad mixture goes. We're not actually going to make a dressing on the side. We're actually going to make this dressing together in the bowl with the ingredients. As I mentioned, this could be done the day before, it allows all those flavors to kind of like get together and, and be happy. So what we're going to add is a little bit of grainy mustard, Dijon mustard. It can be regular Dijon or grainy Dijon is absolutely fine, uh, but we're going to get that in there. We're going to add to that also a little bit of red wine vinegar. And I don't want a whole bunch of dressing in there. I don't want this to be sopping and, and like kind of sitting in a bunch of liquid, but I do want to have a little bit of acidity. So another, uh, another thing that we're going to add for acidity is a little bit of fresh lemon juice, of course. Um, being Greek and all, we want to have that lemon sunshiny kind of flavor coming through. So we'll put that in and then some extra virgin olive oil. Folks, please do not scrimp on your extra virgin olive oil. Please go out and get a half decent olive oil. Um, there are so many olive oils out there that are not necessarily good quality. So spend a bit more on your olive oil. I think it's well worth it. And you can kind of see uh, that we have a beautiful color that's going in here. I don't know if you can catch that, but so a little bit of olive oil goes in and some salt and pepper, of course. 
I'm using kosher salt. So if you think that I'm using crazy amounts of salt, it's not really like that. It's just kosher salt. Um, a diamond, the, the diamond brand is it really is flaky and light and it doesn't have as much seasoning power as you kind of would think. All right. And so to that, we're also gonna add uh, some fresh herbs, a little bit of fresh herbs. Uh, I like to use some mint. Um, we've already put the dried oregano in there. So the, the fresh mint is really, really nice in there. So we'll grab a little bit of, we've got some beautiful fresh herbs again. Um, the, the, the organic section at Sobeys has just like great opportunities for, um, for fresh herbs, like really, really nice stuff. So we're going to use just a little bit of fresh mint. Don't get too carried away because you don't want it to be like, you know, powerful that way. Uh, but I'm going to move it out of the way here so you can kind of see. So I'm going to ship and add. Now ship and add, of course, if you take some flat leaf herbs of any type and you can kind of roll them up in, into kind of a roll. And then that way you can get this nice little shavings of mint. So it's not going to be too strong by any means. So the, the, the herb kind of flavors in this, of course, are going to be the mint and the oregano. All right. So once you have that to that stage, we're good to go. Looks pretty good, huh? Uh, we're gonna give that a little stir. And this is gonna get covered and go into the fridge until we're ready to eat. So again, beautiful to have it done ahead of time, have all those flavors just um, start to kind of melt together. And we're good to go. All right, so that is our Greek salad, locally inspired Greek salad. So super cool, this is the time of the year if you're gonna make a Greek salad, this is what would be when you're gonna do it. Um, I always say, if your ingredients uh, traveled the least amount of distance, that they're probably gonna have the most amount of flavor, right? So we're gonna get that in the fridge and we can, uh, I will definitely take a little sample. Actually, I'm gonna do that right now to make sure that we have our seasoning kind of spot on. Now, the flavor will definitely develop, but mm, how did we do that so well? Into the fridge it goes. Okay, so we have the potatoes in the oven, the Greek salad is made. We're gonna have a little look at our tzatziki. Um, tzatziki is a dip or a condiment, I guess. It's kind of a, a Greek condiment. Um, basically Greek yogurt and grated cucumber. So let's grab the ingredients that we need for that and we'll talk about it. Okay, so Greek yogurt. Don't skimp on some low fat, um, non-Greek yogurt. You really wanna have Greek yogurt for this. Um, a couple reasons why. A, it's got so much, it's a richer flavor for sure. And also they've removed some of the moisture. So you have a thicker type of yogurt. Everything we add to it is gonna kind of, is gonna render it or we're adding things that are going to kind of make it more runny. So you want to start with a nice thick yogurt to start with. So um, again, I go with a brand that at, a, at least 10% fat. Um, it, the fat doesn't have to be there. I know there's some Greek yogurts out there that are kind of a lower fat um, and, and they would probably work fine. But the bottom line is go with Greek yogurt. Okay. Um, the other thing is we've grated some cucumbers ahead of time. So I, I took the other half of the cucumber that we put into our salad and I grated it and I added a bit of salt and put it over a strainer. And just to give you an idea, that's the amount of liquid that we got out of that. So it's, it's actually considerable. The salt helps draw out the moisture. If you were just to grate your cucumber and add it to your yogurt, this now becomes runny, right? So we want the flavor of the cucumber. And yes, cucumber has flavor. It actually has a nice, rich, kind of cucumbery, summery flavor to it. So you, you don't want to add all the liquid, you wanna add just, just the flavor and the actual. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna give it one more squeeze. So I've added salt to this. So I grated the cucumber, put it in the, in the sieve, and then I added a bit of kosher salt to that and just kind of like mix it in. So that's why we've drawn off a fair bit of liquid. You have to, you have to put in there. Now don't, don't put in a bunch of salt uh, because you don't want to rinse. You don't want to have to rinse this afterwards. So about a half a teaspoon for uh, half a teaspoon for about a half a cucumber. It works just fine. Um, salt is very effective at, at removing moisture for sure. 
So again, this was a half of an English cucumber uh, growing somewhere here in Alberta. So a beautiful product for sure. Um, and this is what we end up with. One more little squeeze. That's what we end up with when we're done. So that's probably about close to a half a cup. So that's gonna go into our yogurt. And that, what we got out of it is probably close to half a cup as well. So a surprising amount. I'm sure it's no uh, alarming details that cucumber has a lot of water in it for sure. All right, so what else can we add to this? We're gonna add a little bit of fresh dill. So a little bit of dill. You don't have to spend a bunch of time plucking things off the, off the stem. Just, just have a little bit of fresh dill is great. And we're gonna also add a little bit more fresh mint. Mint and dill are really good kind of uh, herbish notes to go into this, uh, into your tzatziki work really, really well. So we're gonna give this a, a nice chop, but nothing too serious. Another quick note on the, on the cucumber. I graded the cucumber uh, skin, seeds, the whole darn thing. So these aren't, these aren't field cucumbers, these are English cucumbers. So the skin is tender and there's not, the seeds are not a big deal. Um, and the fact that we're removing the water, the moisture anyways, um, works really, really well. So don't, I don't bother taking all, taking the time to peel it or skin it or do any of those things. All right, so there's the fresh herbs. We're gonna add a bit more, we're gonna add a bit of lemon juice to that. Again, sticking with that Mediterranean kind of feel. Add a little bit of kosher salt. And by a little, I mean a fair bit. A little bit of black pepper. And a drizzle of olive oil can go into there as well. This actually will get better and better over time. So it again qualifies very well for being done ahead of time. So get, get the kids involved, show them how to make a nice tzatziki. It's something they can use for the rest of their lives. And uh, cooking is always a good skill, right? So we're gonna give this a nice little toss. We'll have a little taste if you need to adjust the seasoning, that's perfectly fine. So we'll give that a nice mix together. I love it with the, when you have the, the skin of the cucumber in there, as well as the fresh herbs. It gives it a really nice kind of like mixture. You get some green color going on there. It's not just plain white, right? So it adds some color to things. So give that a little stir. Mm. One of our favorite condiments for sure. Um, sometimes if everybody's hungry and we don't have dinner ready, if we have some pita bread and we have tzatziki on hand, guess what? That's, that's what everybody gets. Uh, so we're gonna see how we're doing here on flavor. Mm, that is really good, really, really good. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. Typically that would go into the fridge. Um, we're gonna have things done here pretty quick. So I'm just gonna set it off on the table, uh, but delicious and ready to go. We're gonna take a moment and just have a little look at how our potatoes are doing in the oven. Um, I said about 30 to 40 minutes. Again, we cut these a little smaller so they'll go a little quicker, but we're gonna have a quick look here. Mm. They smell delicious. Obviously that the, the aroma of the lemons are just amazing. So they're coming along here, pretty, pretty darn good. They're starting to get tender. Yep, starting to get a little bit tender. So I'm actually gonna put them on top of the stove. Now, this isn't part of the recipe, but it is part of doing a video for this, is that we need to speed things along a little bit. So I'm actually gonna put them on the stove top to get them cooking a little quicker here. All right, so don't let me forget about those. Someone yell at me, please. Uh, awesome, things are really coming together here. So we're gonna just clean up here a little bit. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do our slow cooker pork. And the slow cooker pork is just like doing a pulled pork, 
except for we're doing Mediterranean flavors as opposed to kind of barbecue type flavors. Now, a lot of times um, we have trouble getting our heads around here. We think of like, we think of full pork and we think of just that one flavor profile, but this works really well. Uh, I was actually surprised, thanks to Amanda. I was surprised at how good this was. Um, this is the second time of me making this. Um, I have not made it a lot, but I did make it the other night and I'm pretty sure it was one of the tops um, of the, of the family. They just absolutely loved it. So um, here we go. So these are our ingredients that we're going to put into this. Now I've got one already done because this is somewhere between a six to eight hour, possibly even longer slow cook in your, in your slow cooker. Now, as you can see, we have a slow cooker there. I, you can certainly do this recipe in a pressure cooker, works just fine. Um, however, if, if you're going to put this on in the morning and be gone all day, then I would simply go with your slow cooker. I think that's a much more suitable method for this and, and works really, really well. All right, so let's first talk about the cut of meat that we're gonna use here. You could use other cuts. The only other one that I would really recommend, I've seen recipes for many different, similar recipes to this, but different cuts of pork. However, this is the one I'm suggesting simply because this is the pork shoulder and I'm going to turn it on end here and you can see it's got beautiful fat all the way through it. Um, and I'm a pork fat guy. Like I think it actually, I think it's actually gives flavor and, and a whole bunch of things. It's, it's, it's a texture and a flavor thing for sure. But so this is a pork butt or a pork shoulder. I know why do they call it a butt or a shoulder, but pork shoulder butt is kind of, is kind of what they, the term that they use for it. However, it is also a blade. Um, so if you're gonna go looking at the store in the meat counter and you're gonna, you're gonna try to find this, you're looking for something that will typically say blade on it. Blade suggests that it's off the shoulder of the animal um, because it has been used a fair bit. The, the, the actual muscle has been used a fair bit. It has more connective tissue and that equals more flavor. So um, that's a little talk. Of course, what you can do at any store almost any stores, you can ask the, the meat cutter, hey, I'm looking for something kind of used for pulled pork and pork shoulder, and they will guide you in the right direction, okay? This is not gonna be, um, this is not a shoulder picnic. This is a, a, a shoulder, this is called a pork butt shoulder. So just don't, don't use the, the picnic one. So I'm gonna get this actually into our slow cooker. And then we're just going to add the ingredients over top of it. And it works really, really well because, well, it's quick and easy. And, and that's, who doesn't like quick and easy, right? That's kind of what we're looking for. So um, this will feed, you're looking at about a half a pound per person. That will give you some leftovers as well. There is some shrinkage that happens um, in, in the pork shoulder because of the amount of fat. So during the cooking process, you'll have fat that will render out and you will end up with that, that uh, shrinkage happening, which is fine. So at least go with a half a pound per person that will give you leftovers as well as cover your basis for dinner. So in goes our pork shoulder. Our potatoes, I can hear the liquid is starting to reduce. So I'm gonna pop it back in the oven shortly here with a towel. Oh, those are looking good. I'm not sure if you can get that. The lemon aroma right now is amazing. Yeah, so I'm gonna give that a toss. That's gonna to go back into the oven. And we'll let those finish up. They shouldn't take a, more than a few minutes to be, to be nice and tender and ready to go. So two are pork in our slow cooker. We're gonna add some lovely flavoring ingredients. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is add some fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh thyme, just use dry thyme. It's not, not the end of the world. Some fresh rosemary, and I have a lot of it to use, so I'm going to add a fair bit of it. Again, these get plucked out of there before we actually do the pulling process after it's cooked. So don't, don't get too stressed out about, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Um, it, it's, it's going to be more delicate after it cooks, for sure. Then we're going to add to that, we're going to add a little bit of white onion. You can use any onion you have on hand. Don't go out and buy white onion if you have yellow onion or sweet onion or any of those. Just 
work with what you have. It's all about kind of using things up. So in goes the onion. We're gonna smash, oh, I don't know. We'll smash three or four cloves of garlic. Again, it's kind of the same thing. You don't have to worry too much about being precise on these aromatic kind of ingredients. But we are gonna give it a smash um, and we will take the skins off. However, the reality is that's not even super important either. We don't really need to remove all of that, but it's still a, still a good idea. Um, we're gonna get the beautiful flavor from the garlic regardless whether it's peeled or otherwise. And you can certainly take that when this is done, you can take those cloves of garlic um, out of the skin. They just squeeze out very easily and just add them to the whole mixture. Delicious, delicious flavor for sure. Okay, so there's our garlic in there. Then we're gonna add a little bit of tomato paste. Um, now I've suggested a small can, a small tin of tomato paste. Now you can do a half of that. Again, not super important that you're super precise on this. Now here's an ingredient that a lot of people wouldn't think of, but I use it all the time. It's super flavorful. This is banana pepper juice. So it's pickle juice basically. So you can use, uh, I, we use all of our juices out of any fermented product or any of the pickle products. I love the flavor that it adds. So it's like adding vinegar, but flavored vinegar to, to things. So we're gonna add banana pepper juice. Feel free to look through the fridge and see what you have on hand. Um, if you don't have it, a splash of vinegar will do the trick as well. Then we're gonna add some smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is just like regular paprika. However, the peppers that the paprika comes from are kind of dried over or near a fire. It adds a wonderful flavor. Again, if you don't have smoked paprika, add regular paprika. So get that in there. We're gonna have a little bit of dried chilies. Now we're not looking to make this spicy by any means. Now when we add chilies to food, I quite often look at it as we're adding interest, not that we're adding spice. It will give it a little tingle of heat, but I don't want, my end result is not that I'm gonna have people eat this and go, woo, that's spicy. It's more so, it's like, it's a bunch of different things and there's a tingle. So it's adding interest. Uh, then we're gonna add some dried oregano again. Again, our flavor profile that we're looking for. Uh, then to that, we're going to add some lemon juice, of course. So there's not a lot of liquid in here. However, what you will find is this will create a fair bit of liquid on its own. So you don't have to worry too much about, oh my gosh, this is, this doesn't have like four or five cups of liquid in it. You don't have to worry about that. So now I've added a fair bit of lemon juice, which is a, of course gonna add to that liquid. And I think that's just about everything that we're gonna add here. Let me just consult the recipe here. Yeah, salt and pepper, of course. Um, so a good spoonful of kosher salt, three or four cranks of black pepper. And now we can simply set this aside. Now this could be done to this stage of put in the fridge. So what I would do is lift the insert out, put that in the fridge. If you were doing this the night before, it would certainly save a bunch of time. The other thing about the pulled pork that I really like or the, the Mediterranean pork is you could, you could actually cook that pork if you were doing it for something and you, you didn't need that kind of time during the day, you could cook it a day ahead of time. Um, and the, the advantage to that is when it's cooled down after it's cooked, you'll get a layer of fat on top of the sauce that can easily be scooped off and discarded and then you just reheat it. So you're good to go. That, that will save time. However, um, if you were gonna go out boating or going out for the day the next morning, put this in all together right now, put it in the fridge, the next morning, you set it into your crock pot or into your slow cooker, push go, and away you go. All right, so I'm going to set this over here. I'm going to plug it in. The beautiful thing about these slow cookers as well 
is the flavor or the, the aroma, I should say, that you, you end up getting. It's just, it's amazing, right? You, co you come back from, from being away for eight hours and the house or trailer or whatever smells amazing, right? So it's, it's super cool and it's safe. It's a safe way to cook. There's, there's not a lot of ways you can cook while you're not at home. This is a safe way to do it for sure. All right, so we're, we're going to now look at the one that I've already prepared. Uh, so I have, I have this, this, the other half of that pork shoulder butt um, already gone through the, the, the process. So we're gonna bring it out here and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. And this was driving us all crazy. This has been cooking um, and for the last little bit of the day. And yeah, everybody's pretty impressed with it for sure. So um, I'm gonna move a few things here so we can kind of get a close up and, and see things a bit better. So the liquid that we have here, there's gotta be about there's gotta be two or three cups of liquid that's in the pot. I'm not sure if you can get, get a look at it, but yeah, it's, it's kind of running away, but that's fine. Um, so what we're gonna do here, uh, using a couple forks, we are going to lift the meat out of there, and then you guys can get a better look at it here. Um, very tender, like, like so tender that I don't know if we can actually get it out, okay. I think tongs might be the better, better solution here, but there is no doubt about that this pork shoulder is beautiful and tender. Um, just goes so well with, with the potatoes and the salad. And of course, we're going to serve this with pitas as well. So there, there is, it, it's such a nice summer meal uh, that it just works so, so well. So we'll get this out of here. Now, you definitely don't want to discard that liquid that's in, in there. That liquid is, is gold. It's got everything that you can imagine. All those flavors are still in there. So do not discard the liquid. I'm going to set it off to the side here so we can get a better idea. And I'll turn this down just a little bit so you can kind of see that. All right. So using a couple forks, you're going to start pulling some of these things aside. So I always have a little container because as you noticed in the very beginning when we were looking at the raw product, that there is a fair bit of fat in this. As I said, that works to its advantage. However, when you're done the cooking process, any of the fat that hasn't rendered down needs to be removed or some of it. Now, everybody will be different on this. I still like a little of the fat in there, but I know that's not everybody, right? So any of the fat that's a big, big chunks like that, go ahead and get, get rid of it using, using your fork. Okay. So it looks like most of it, and that's the nice thing is during this cooking process, you know, eight, eight plus hours in the slow cooker, most of that fat will reduce down. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is using the forks, I'm gonna to start to kind of pull the pork apart. And you don't have to get it totally shredded down um, like pulled pork is. You can certainly leave it so it's kind of chunky, a little bit more chunky, um, because that works. It works absolutely fine. And my dog is right here, Sheffrey. Her name's Chef. I did not name her. Um, but she is here wishing she had some right now. She's telling me. But well, we're going to pull this. Oh, there's a little more fat there to remove. Nothing too serious, though. Yeah, so we're just going to shred that. Now we're going to add it back to the liquid that we have, the cooking liquid. And that's when this all comes alive and is all so beautiful. So we'll give that a nice pull. So that's about as far as I'm going to go. You can kind of see we have a nice bunch of meat there. Nice, nice pork shoulder. So we can go ahead and add this back to that liquid. Now this is our opportunity um, to adjust the seasoning and just make some last little adjustments. Typically a little bit of salt and pepper. I wouldn't get too carried away uh, in, in case you, unless you completely missed some ingredients, you can certainly add them now. But we're gonna get in there 
And you saw how easily that pulled apart. Um, it, is, it is quite, quite tender. Um, again, eight to 10 hours in a slow cooker makes just about anything give it up, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice and tender. All that connective tissue, with, which equals flavor, starts to dissolve. And now we have that richness in our meat and in our, in our sauce as well. So, all right. So that's a, that's a done deal there. We're gonna set that off to the side. Uh, we're gonna have another quick look at our potatoes and then we're gonna build a nice plate and kind of see what that might look like with all of our different components. So I'll, I'll set this aside here. I'm hungry just like this. This is smelling amazing. You guys are gonna love this. It's such a, such a great recipe. Okay. So we'll go have a quick look at our potatoes. I'm confident that they're doing really, really good. Oh yeah, I can see we've got some brownie action. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so there's the potatoes. Here, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit so you can kind of see. They're nice and caramely. They're super tender. So those are ready to go. These are going to mop up some of that saucy bit that we have in the, in the pork. Um, and again, just go so well with the, with the tzatziki as well as the Greek salad. Beautiful, beautiful combination. All right. So we'll set that there. And we'll get our plate and get organized for this. We'll grab our Greek salad. All right. And again, if you imagine this has been in the, in the fridge overnight, all those flavors would have really started to develop in a beautiful way. All right. So we're going to plate this up. And guess what I'm having for dinner tonight? Uh, all right, so a Greek salad in one spot on the plate. Of course, some of our lemon potatoes. One of the things I do sometimes too is hit it with a little bit more lemon juice as it, as it comes out of the uh, oven for the potatoes, which just of course bumps up that freshness for sure. I love the caramel that we got on the potatoes there. You can kind of see Beautiful caramely loveliness. So there's the potatoes on there. We'll get a bit of our lovely pork. And this pork, it, just to give you an idea, um, it's smoky smelling, just a little bit of smoky from the smoked paprika. Obviously the lemon and the tomato and the herbs and the garlic, it just, it really works together. I like to put this kind of with the, the potatoes because that sauce just works so well with that. Oh my gosh. All right, and then we're gonna grab the tzatziki. And the common question, what does the tzatziki go with in this particular case? Everything. Um, in particular, the potatoes and the pork, and we have some pitas that we're gonna serve with this as well. But a big scoop of tzatziki is a, is a wonderful thing for this. Set that off to the side. Now we'll just grab a pita. Now, if, you're, if you have the barbecue on at this point, you can certainly grill the pitas quickly. Um, but you certainly do not have to. I don't think it's a, by any means, is it a have to thing. Um, and I just like to cut my pitas into wedges. And those go on the side and you can certainly serve this with a little bit of fresh herbs if you're interested. Um, so there we have it, folks. This is Amanda's Mediterranean pork with a Greek salad, locally inspired. Uh, the potatoes also, a lemon potato also locally inspired with tzatziki sauce and it's a thing of beauty. So I hope that, I hope that has inspired everybody and um, I hope everybody has a great taste of Okotoks week and um, 
yeah, all the best and enjoy the hot weather. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.